Welcome back, folks, for a new episode of Leaked. And today we'll cover the Australian cruiser tanks, the Sydney AC-1 and the AC-1E2-4 hybrid. So basically, the AC-4. Now, these two tanks are going to be premium tier 4 and tier 6 British medium tanks. And that does make sense because Australia is in the British Commonwealth. But funny enough, the Ram 2 is American, but Canada is also in the British Commonwealth. So why isn't the Ram 2 British? That does not make sense, but small fun fact. Now the AC-1 and the AC-4 are generally the same vehicle. They have the same armor, engine, top speed, traverse, and the radio. So pretty much the same mobility. The only difference is the gun. The AC-1 has a 2-pounder, whereas the AC-4 has the 17-pounder with a slightly larger turret. But the turret has the same armor, so it's pretty much the same turret. So yeah, that's kind of disappointing because you're shifting from tier 4 to a tier 6 without any benefits of better mobility. The only difference is the gun. So, uh, okay, I guess. But here's a little history about the Australian cruiser tank, the Sentinel. So it was originally developed to counter the Japanese if there was an invasion into Australia. So the tank design was based on the M3 Lee and the British Crusader. So they took the lower hull, the engine, the drivetrain from the M3 Lee, and they took the upper hull and the turret from the British Crusader and merge it into one vehicle. And that's the AC-1 signal for ya. So it's like the Ram 2, because the Ram 2 is basically the Canadians placing a British turret onto the M3 Lee and taking out the hull mounted gun. So yeah, tank designs were simple enough, but yeah, this tank looks roughly like a Crusader. Does have a phallic shape. <laughs> I can't stop taking this tank seriously because that freaking machine gun port. It has a Vickers machine gun on the hull, but it has a weird casing mounted for the machine gun. So as you can see, it looks super phallic. <laughs> so I'll show you better pictures later on, but yeah, just, okay. Just cannot take this tank seriously. But yeah, there were a lot of variants of the Sentinel tanks. So they developed different guns for it. Initially it has a two pounder, the 40 millimeter with lots of rounds for it. So it's like the Matilda's top gun. It's a 40 millimeter. Has two Vickers machine gun, 7.7 millimeters with lots of rounds for it. So one in the hull and one for the coaxial port next to the main gun. And three V8 engines mounted in the back. So basically that's the initial signal tank. They upgraded with a 125 pounder howitzer so they removed the hull mounted machine gun because that took up space and reduced the crew to four now. The engine is pretty much the same with a different case in the back. The AC-4 is a 17 pounder gun mounted towards the turret. So basically the same as a Thunderbolt, the AC-3, but they switch out the guns. Now the combat history for this vehicle is basically none because this tank never saw action because at the time, Australia's armored divisions were equipped with American and British tanks. So the signal was excessive. It doesn't need the signal yet. So this tank was developed, but they produced around 63 or 65 of them. And they never saw combat. So, oh, 65 right here. So never saw combat modified with more armor and a 25 pounder or a 17 pounder. The project was terminated in 1943. Better to build railways, locomotives, and support American tanks due to arrive. So yeah, it's better to buy other tanks and build better railways to transport than producing a tank of your own. So I guess that's their logic. And these tanks never saw combat. So a squadron of AC-1s were modified to look like German tanks in the Rats of Tobruk. It's a 1944 film. I think it got like 60% on Rotten Tobendos or something. Okay, <laughs> never saw it. But yeah, here are some pictures of this vehicle. So as you can see, it has a phallic shape. 
<laughs> phallic shaped machine gun port for the Vickers machine gun. Here is Mr. Yuri Pashlock. He is World Gaming's chief historian. So he's measuring. <laughs> Just looks so wrong with this picture. So he is measuring the machine gun port for funsies. Here is a demonstration of, or not demonstration, just anti-aircraft practice with the uh, Vickers machine gun or the top mounted machine gun against balloons. All right. Here is a test vehicle for the AC-3 Thunderbolt into the AC-4. So basically what they did is they put two 25 pounder howitzers and mounted them into a turret to test out if the turret and the turret ring could handle the recoil for the 17 pounder. So they basically mounted a double barrel. That looks pretty cool though. Double barreled howitzer on this vehicle to test out the recoil. And later on, they stick the bigger 17 pounder onto it. So here is the AC-4. So the AC-1 and the AC-4 are not a new tank to water tanks. Now, if you watch ASAP videos, or if you played the game for a long time, like I do, you probably have noticed this vehicle in the 9.3 patch. So right here, you can see the old T-54 E2 right here. And here is the Sentinel with the 17 pounder. So basically an AC-4 right here. But they never add this vehicle to the game for the public. It's already in the archives. So it's in the database or the main files, but it's never been put to use, so to speak. So there were different versions of this vehicle, but yeah, it was the introduction of the second American light tank line with the Bulldog and the T-49. So here's the T-49 blowing up stuff. And here's the T-54 E2. Here's the signal. Small fun fact. So here is AC-1 signal. It's basically the tier four Crusader slash Matilda hybrid. So this tank is not as fast as a Crusader and not as well armored as a Matilda, but it's basically the hybrid middle part of that vehicle. <laughs> they even modeled the phallic shape. <laughs> this machine gun port. Oh boy. But there's also a coaxial machine gun port, a tumor on the turret. So yeah. So, funny enough, this is not a hitbox, so shooting at this phallic shape machine gun covering will not do any damage. You only penetrate the armor behind it, but this is not a hitbox. So funny enough, but <laughs> every time I look at this thing, everybody points to this wiener at the top, <laughs> at the front. Oh man, this, it's so, it's so eye-catching. Just like when you look at this tank, immediately you look at this thing just like that looks like a penis <laughs> oh man but yeah it's a cruiser tank it's fine it's fine i guess it's fine oh boy has the vvss suspension the same as the m3 lee in the early models of the m4 sherman here are the early models of this vehicle so this vehicle is already in the game for a long time. So early models were already in single death. Not like the non-texture models you see in other videos, but whatever. So here's the collision models. As you can see, the best armor is 65 millimeters at the front. And this plate is not even 65 millimeters. It's about 38 or so. So the armor is not as good as the Crusader in some parts. Well, the Crusader doesn't have that much armor, but it's not the same as Matilda. That's what I'm trying to say. The Crusader has some parts which well sloped and you can bounce a few shots like the turret, but eh, it's, it's like a Crusader. I guess it's like a Crusader. Matilda parts are basically the lower plate in the middle. It's okay. So here are the main stats for this vehicle. It's going to be a premium tier four British medium tank. Has a crew of five with normal matchmaking the gold cost is around 1,200 gold. So, is it overpriced? Ugh, you, 
you can buy a premium tier 5 medium tank for 1,500 gold. So basically for 300 more gold, you can buy a better tier vehicle. Like the M4 improved, uh, the T25, the old T25. What else is that tier 5? The Matilda Mark IV for the Russians. The Matilda Black Prince, which I highly advise not to. Mm. Okay, what else is the Excelsior, the T14. So yeah, a lot of stuff, but there's not a lot of tier 4 premium vehicles other than the Panzer B2. So the German version of the B2 and the T28 with the F30, the recently introduced old T28 with the old KV-1 gun, but it's okay. I guess the gold cost is alright. Has 370 health, okay. Engine power is 330, weighs about mm, 28 tons. So the power toy ratio is way below average. So if it's red, if it's really red, it's really bad. So 11.91. And in my opinion, that's way below average and not as good. So the average is around 17 or so. So that's pretty bad. Top speed is pretty good. 60.4 kilometers per hour. Hull traverse is 40 degrees per second. Turret traverse is 46 degrees per second. Terrain resistance is 1.05 for hard, 1.15 for medium, and 2.1 for soft. So, slightly below average, but workable. The view range is very good, 350 meters. So this tank could scout for itself. If you have a good crew, if you have coded optics, that could go up to 420 meters of view range, which is very good for a tier four medium tank, tier four. So that's pretty good. The radio is below average by a little bit, only 470 meters. Ick. The hull armor is 65 at the front, 45 at the sides, and 45 at the rear. The turret is 65 all the way around. And armor is pretty decent, if it's top tier, but it's no Matilda, so... Okay, has a 2 pounder gun, has a lot of ammo, but the penetration is slightly below average, only 88. APCR is 121, so you could penetrate some tier 6s. The alpha of the gun is super low, like the Matilda, but you have a high rate of fire. The DPM is way below average, so only 1,175. Mm. Ick. The reload is 2.3 seconds. I don't believe you could fit a gun rammer, could you? I think you could on the Matilda. Yes, I fit the gun rammer, vents, and spall liner to my Matilda, I believe. So you could fit a gun rammer, but the DPM based on the alpha is super low because the Matilda has 55 alpha with the same, well, not the same two pounder, but, but the same caliber two pounder, but has 55 alpha, whereas this vehicle has 45 alpha. So the DPM is not that high. Uh, the aim time is also pretty crap, only, wow, 2.7 seconds, that's way above average, or above the normal, so way below average. But accuracy is decent enough, so I guess it's alright. And 10 degrees of gun depression with 20 elevation. So the main bad parts about the AC-1 is the horsepower per ton ratio is god awful for a medium tank, but if you're used to playing heavy tanks, then this is alright, but in my opinion, that's pretty bad. The alpha is also pretty bad, mixed win with the DPM. Yeah, this just not that good. Also, the aim time for a 40mm gun is super long. <laughs> this is a 40mm gun. It takes like 1.8 seconds for the Matilda to aim. Why does it take like more than one second, or around one second more, for this vehicle to aim with the same caliber? That sucks. Oh well. 
Here is the AC4 or the hybrid. So it's a 17 pounder on the same vehicle. It's shifted to tier 6 now. So more threatening opponents like tier 8s. Oh well. But yeah, looks pretty much the same vehicle with a slightly larger turret but with a 17 pounder. So okay. Collision model states that this vehicle has the same armor as the tier 4. The turret is the same, 65 millimeters all the way around. It's just slightly bigger. So, yeah. And here are the main stats for the AC4. So premium tier 6, British medium tank, with normal matchmaking. But the crew got reduced to 4 with the removal of the hull mounted machine gun. Even though they model the phallic shaped machine gun port as well. So, oh well. the gold cost should be around 3,600 gold, like the Rudy, the T3485M. What else is that tier 6 medium? The Sherman Fury. Uh, what else is sure? The Panzer IV Small Term. Oh man, I cannot think of any tier 6 medium tanks. Oh, it's so hard to think. Oh well, so it's around the same ballpark as 3,600 gold or so. Hit points is slightly below average, 750. Engine is the same, so the power to weight ratio is even crappier than the tier 4 because the more weight, about 28 tons or 28, 29 tons or so. So, ick. Top speed is the same, 60.4 kilometers per hour, so pretty good. Reverse is 20. All traverse is 40 degrees per second. Third traverse is about 46 degrees per second. So pretty good. Terrain resistance is 0 0.95 for hard, 1.15 for medium, and 2.1 for soft. So slightly below average. View range is 360 meters, slightly below average. Radio range is the same as a tier 4. So a little bit below average by a lot. So that sucks. That, that's just a position that doesn't make sense. Eh? Okay, whatever. The hull armor is 65 at the front, 45 at the sides, and 45 at the rear. Turret armor is the same. Okay, that sucks. It has a 17 pounder now, so that's good. The penetration, yeah, 17 pounder for a tier 6 medium tank. That's amazing. It's basically the Sherman Firefly. So 171 millimeters of penetration, amazing. APCR. Pretty good, also amazing. High explosive is below average, but whatever. Don't even need a high explosive that much. Rate of fire, DPM, reload. All below average by a little bit. So you can see that it's slightly pink, but it's okay, it's okay around the same ballpark. Aim time is pretty good. Now they do not give us the gun depression on this vehicle, but I am guessing based on the Sherman Firefly and based on the size of the turret, it's about 5 degrees of gun depression, so unless this vehicle has like 8 degrees of gun depression, I doubt it, but this tank would be pretty good, even if it has a crappy horsepower per ton ratio. But I am guessing that this tank will have 5 degrees of gun depression with 15 elevation, so yeah, it's like the Sherman Firefly, but it's a premium tank, so counterbalance. The big negative factor is still the horsepower per ton ratio. So this is really bad. 11.6 for a medium tank at tier 6. You're facing the likes of the Cromwell, the Shermans. Even the Sherman Jumbo has a better horsepower per ton ratio, I, I think. The Sherman EZ8 has around uh, 18 or so. The Sherman Jumbo has around 13 or so. I may be mistaken, but even the Sherman Jumbo has a better... Oh, I'll just make sure right now. Alright, so let's take a look at the Sherman Jumbo. But, yeah. I believe the Sherman Jumbo has a better horsepower per turn ratio. You, you see this? I thought it was 13. It's actually 15.56. For the Sherman Jumbo. The Sherman Jumbo is not a fast tank. 
<sighs> okay, let's take a look at the E8. <laughs> the easy 8. Yeah, 18 or so. I was about right. So, yeah. This tank has 11.6. <laughs> and the terrain resistance is also below average. So, it's not counterbalanced with the terrain resistance with the horsepower per ton ratio. So, this tank is not mobile. <laughs> Holy crap. So here are my final thoughts and opinions. So the AC-1, the tier 4 British medium tank, has great view range, 350 meters, that's very good. Top speed is pretty good, DC enough armor if it's top tier, so it could play like a Matilda. The average terrain resistance, radio and penetration and accuracy means that you cannot really scout based on the radio, you cannot really penetrate stuff or snipe. And you have crappy alpha and DPM with the horsepower per ton ratio. So this tank is not fast and penetrates stuff reliably. So basically, you're more of a scout based on your view range. So that sucks, I guess. So do not expect to do a lot of damage with this tank. So, meh. As for the AC4, that tier 6. Great penetration, the 17 pounder, amazing gun. But you have about average DPM, average accuracy, and terrain resistance. So, yeah. And you have terrible horsepower per ton ratio with subpar radio. So, getting artillery support might be difficult if you're on the front lines. And you might struggle with the gun depression like the Sherman Firefly, but that's not even given out. So, we'll see. So the main problem with these two vehicles is the AMX-40 duck syndrome. And what that means is you have great top speed, but you have a crappy engine. So you never reach that top speed. So that's a duck syndrome. You have to get pushed by something like a Panzer 1C if you want to get anywhere or push by a Sherman or push by a Stuart or something. But yeah, the duck syndrome is harsh for medium tanks. The AMX-40 is a light tank. Whatever, the same problem. And this tank doesn't have that much armor, like a Matilda. So, that sucks. I mean, the Ma Matilda has amazing armor at tier 4, 75mm. This tank has sporadic 65mm, so it could bounce a few shots if it's top tier for the AC-1. But for the AC-4, you're not bouncing shots at tier 6. So, that's a no. And this tank is not that fast to get away. So, sucks. And don't have the gun de depression to go haul down with a 17 pounder. Okay, that sucks. So, is it worth it? Now, I think the Cromwell B, the Berlin Cromwell, is better suited to the British medium tank's playstyle for the medium tiers, like tier 5, tier 6, tier 7 or so. If you want to play high tier British medium tanks, they perform generally the same, but more snipey. So yeah, the Cromwell is better suited to playing as a premium tank for the British mediums. So eh. And I always thought the Matilda is just great of a heavy medium tank hybrid at tier 4. So the Matilda just outshines the AC-1. So with a much better 2 pounder gun. And I stayed away from the Matilda Black Prince because that thing is slow, has crappy penetration, and does have preferential matchmaking, but the armor is not that good at tier 5. So basically the same thing with the AC-4 and AC-1. Well, the AC-4 has better penetration, but yeah, but that Matilda Black Prince, ugh. I stayed away from that vehicle a long time. So if you want to buy a premium tier 4, I recommend the T28 with the F30, the recently released. The rehash T28 with the old KV-1's gun. So that's actually a pretty decent tank. I play around with it, so very good. I haven't got the Bastry badge, so I'll do the review video soon if I can. But yeah, if you want to buy a premium tier 4, the T28 is not that bad, or you can try the B2 from the Germans, but it's basically the same as the French B2, with slightly changes to the soft stats, but slightly. 
So there's not that many tier 4 premium tanks. And if you're buying premium tier 4s, do not expect to make that much credits out of them. It's mostly used for crew training because you earn about the same experience as a tier 8 premium. So you use them for crew training. But yeah, it's not usually used for credit making. So yeah, but yeah, it's all right. As for the AC4, buy the Chromo B. Yeah, the Chromo B just suits so much better. Yeah, you do have a 17 pounder gun, but the horsepower per turn ratio is really bad. Like, let's take a look at Firefly. I'm not convinced. <laughs> not convinced. So Sherman Firefly. It has better horsepower per turn ratio on the Sherman Firefly, better terrain resistance to help with the power horsepower per turn ratio. DPM is better. View range is better. Accuracy, I believe, is slightly better. I believe. Yep, slightly better. Aim time's the same, 60 degrees of gun depression. Okay, so yeah, Sherman Firefly is slightly better. But the armor is pretty much the same. You do have a mantlet though. So, better mantlet, I guess. And better turret. Thicker armor on the turret. It's a premium tank, so... Uh, I don't know. Is it worth it to buy the AC4? Mm. So much better to play the British Cromwell B. Because in the middle tiers for British medium tanks, it's more focused on horsepower per turn ratio, flanking, and just pummeling them with rapid firing guns. Whereas this vehicle plays more of a tank destroyer, like the Firefly, because the Firefly leads up to the Charioteer and the FE4005. So they are tank destroyers, which is more suited to the playstyle. So if you like playing snipery kind of medium tanks, I guess it's fine. But if you're training your crews from, you know, the Centurions or Action X Centurions or the Comet, then this vehicle, the AC4, is not really better suited to the playstyle because you have like Steady shot, you have off-road driving, you have snapshot for the gunner. So it's more, shoot more suited to shooting on the move. Whereas for this vehicle, you probably will train in Deadeye to help with the sniping capabilities. You probably train in like camouflage or something. So it's a different play style. And I recommend the Cromwell B if you're looking for a middle tier British medium tank. But... It's all right of a premium tank, so it's it's not that special. That's what I'm trying to get at, but it's okay enough. So thank you guys for watching this video. Hope you guys enjoyed it, and I'll see you guys next time. Peace. Some pride. Well, this one is sensitive, but I'm a crooked.